The most highly trained search and rescue dogs in the nation need your support. Hey, there's somebody down here. Please, be part of the search. April 19th, 1995. Just after 9 a.m., a terrorist bomb destroyed the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. In an instant, the blast killed and injured hundreds of innocent men, women, and children, trapping over 200 victims beneath nine stories of debris. One of the last survivors to be pulled from the rubble was located by a search and rescue dog. Many animals like these are trained under the watchful eye of Wilma Melville of the Natural Disaster Search Dog Foundation. My specialty is disaster search. We look for human scent when there has been a disaster like an earthquake or a train wreck or a mudslide. Anything that collapses buildings, unfortunately even bombings. Amazingly, these heroic animals are handpicked by Wilma and volunteers from the thousands of abandoned dogs housed at animal shelters throughout California. Now I see here's one, but no interest in my toy. I'm not looking for trained characteristics at all. I'm going to look for what we call prey drive and hunt drive. They're genes that the dog has inherited. The third thing that is required is a boldness of character, uh, a personality that will not be easily stopped or daunted. Ah, what are we here? It only takes a few moments for Wilma to recognize a potential search dog. Here's a likely candidate. Sherman, a two-year-old Labrador retriever, will go through a battery of preliminary tests. Here we go, here we go. Now, I'm watching his speed. His speed is good. Now this is intensity. This is what we want. Using a starter pistol, Wilma tests Sherman's ability to concentrate and stay focused. These skills are crucial when there are loud noises and other distractions during rescue situations. Here we go. Ready? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. No reaction to the gunshot at all. Come on. The final and most important preliminary test will determine the intensity of Sherman's natural hunting instincts. Now, I toss it in the bushes, letting him see where it goes. I turn him once around and let him go. A lot of dogs, when you spin them, they lose interest right there. But you see, he's really loving what he's doing. Look at that tail go. Look at that body language. He really wants that thing. He's not giving up easily. He has to use his nose. He has to be persistent. It's always exciting, this part, because this is where I lose a lot of good prospects. He's at it for 20 seconds. Ah! Yes, Sherman, yes, that's a boy. Way to go, way to do it, good boy. This is a dog I want. This is a dog that we can train to be a fine disaster search dog. This guy will have $5,000 worth of training, and I feel really confident about this dog. Heal. Good, heal. Once selected, the dogs enter the second phase of training at a canine boot camp. Here, the animals are put through a rigorous six-month program and tested on a specially designed obstacle course. Earth climb. Kind of looks like circus tricks, but it has much more importance than that. It tells us that the dog is confident even when something is tipsy and moving under him. It tells us that he can handle weird and strange footing that he'll walk across a plank and then go up a ladder, that heights Wait. don't bother him. Turn. So Wait. that in our work, if we have to ask him to do that, he'll 
We'll do that, no problem. Go. One of the most important skills nurtured in the trainees is what is known as a bark alert. This distinctive yelp acts as a signal when the dog detects the scent of a survivor. What a good In disaster search, we train them to find live people, to alert, do the bark alert at live scent. Ah, it's a good girl. Tug, tug, tug. Don't let him have it. Tug, tug, tug. For the individual dogs that we work with, it is everything. <laughs> but training for these dogs is far from over. The dogs that graduate from this canine boot camp are paired up with human rescue partners from throughout the United States. That's great. Each team must pass a series of tests before they can be certified. Hello? Come on, Dusty, here. Firefighter Randy Gross was partnered with Dusty, a two-year-old golden retriever trained by Wilma. Good job. Had a good girl. Wilma rescued this dog from who knows what kind of life it would have had. And now here it is, just a wonderful, great, you know, very loved and loving pet that has found its niche. I mean, you can see what a great dog she is. Big tanks that have been placed. Using a local concrete recycling center as a testing site, Randy and Dusty will respond to several simulated rescue scenarios. In one, a volunteer is buried beneath the rubble. But only a few yards away, a cat has also been hidden as a potential distraction. Dusty has just 20 minutes to locate the hidden volunteer. Search. The handler is equally tested. Dusty. The handler needs to read the area, control the dog, move the dog, put the dog in the best situation for the scent to be brought to him on the wind. Dusty here, leave it. The ability to distinguish human scents over a wide area is crucial in rescue operations, where minutes may mean the difference between life and death for trapped victims. The dog can clear large areas and essentially tell us there's not likely anyone here. So we don't have to put resources there, we can move on. This is a really very valuable and important part of what they do. Show me, girl, show me. Dusty and Randy earned their certification and can now be deployed when disaster strikes. The dogs that they have taken on as their canine partner are just the luckiest dogs in the world. They have gone from kind of a miserable wreck of an animal to a robust and healthy and happy animal as it learned its job to a totally delighted dog. Girl. One of the nicest things about what the foundation is doing is that we rescue dogs and turn them into rescuers. 